Hey everybody, Kevin McNulty here with another audio blog segment. Today I want to talk to you about being human. Hmm. I recently watched an episode of the TV show Being Human and it got me to thinking about humanity. In reading up on the original British version of the show, I was intrigued by its central premise. It's essentially about three supernatural human beings, a ghost, a vampire, and a werewolf, trying to live amongst ordinary human beings. And in doing so, they're trying to blend in and live normal lives. However, they each have very unique challenges to being human. The ghost is dealing with, well, living as a ghost. The werewolf has to pre-plan his transformation so as to not kill anyone. And the vampire is constantly fighting the temptation of living around so much fresh human blood. With all that said, the show plays out their challenges of being human and dealing with humans. But you know, this fictional TV show brings out something real. That being human and dealing with humans in reality is a struggle for humans. As a personal development coach, I see these struggles all the time, in varying degrees of course. And the truth is, we all have our weaknesses, our defects and things to work on. So for us humans, the question is not, what does it take to be human, but rather, what does it take to be a good, better, decent, and more effective human? Now, as I'm writing this blog, I'm imagining that some of you will immediately leap to a simple platitude like, just be yourself or just live by the golden rule. And I I can only reply in kind with, that's easier said than done. Contrary to what we may aspire to be, most of us are challenged every day to be good, kind, more loving, more compassionate, or more thoughtful human beings. Now, I'm not talking about when things are going really well, when we're in a good mood or the right state of mind, feeling calm, good, peaceful, and so forth. You see, that's easy. I'm talking about when we're caught off guard, or when someone attacks us, or when we we read something on Facebook that flies in the face of common sense or, or our own personal values. It's during these moments, in these times, when being a good human is more difficult, much more challenging. Now the good news about being human, and that separates us from other species, is that we have the ability to consciously change and improve. And despite your internal or external challenges, being good, better, more effective, even a great human being is very doable. Albeit depending on a variety of factors, for some of us, it can be a real challenge. One thing for sure, however, it's worth the challenge because it's important and necessary for the sake of humanity. But the question is how? How do we change and improve? What does it take? Well, here's a five-point process that you can use as a guideline. It's not rocket science nor groundbreaking news. It's just a simple but effective way to help you grow as a human being. Number one, start by practicing humility, by recognizing that you are indeed human. Now, this is not a platitude nor an excuse to accept the status quo, but rather it's meant to suggest that while we should work on becoming better people, we also have to accept that being human means being imperfect. Number two, You have to stop. What I mean is that, you know, you have to stop or slow down your busy and sometimes chaotic life in order to seriously reflect on the past, present, and the future. Too often we try to reflect or evaluate our lives on the fly. This is like trying to read a compass while zigzagging on the run. You must stop and take the time to think, get oriented, and chart a path. Number three, take stock on your current humanity. Determine what it is you'd like to change and improve. You can determine this by asking a few simple questions. First ask, what are you doing well that you should keep doing or do more of? Maybe you're good at paying compliments to people, but you just need to do more of it. Next, ask, what are you doing that is hurting your humanity and that you should stop doing? Perhaps you damage relationships because you're too crass or sarcastic. Well, stop doing that. And then ask, what should you start doing that will improve upon your humanity that will make you a better, more effective human being? Again, these are three simple questions and things that you can immediately do to improve who you are as a person. Number four, figure out your blind spots. You know, we all have blind spots, those emotions and behaviors that we're just not consciously aware of, and they're not serving us very well. But too few of us take the time to figure them out, take ownership, and then deal with them. Again, you can improve this area by asking a few simple questions of the people around you. Of course, people who care about you and your relationship. Ask simple questions about your blind spots or ask questions about how you can improve. Say in your relationships like, you know, how can I be a better father, spouse, mate, friend, or coworker? You'll be amazed what you learn about yourself. 
I've done this and was quite amazed. I learned this technique from a friend and coaching mentor, a man by the name of Marshall Goldsmith. A few years ago, I was attending the National Speakers Association convention up in New York, and he was given a speech at one of the general sessions, I don't know, for a thousand people or so. And he came out and he asked the audience, how can you be a better leader? How can you know how to be a better leader? And everybody was expecting this really profound answer. And he simply said, well, just go ask your employees. They'll tell you. So after the convention was over, I went home and asked my daughters, what can I do to be a better father? I I was really amazed, and I learned so much about what they thought about me and what I could do to improve. And by the way, if you do ask for feedback, stress to them that you're trying to become a better person and really want their honest feedback. Then if they give it to you, you know, don't judge it. Don't get defensive. Don't even say, yes, I know, or I've tried that. Simply say thank you, then walk away and use it to change and improve if it makes sense to you. And finally, number five, pick one, two, or three things to improve and work on them. You know, personal development is a process, really a journey. And sometimes it just takes time to see progress. It's a bit like weightlifting. When you first start within about 30 or 45 days, you see some progress, but then you plateau out and it may take another three months before you see more progress. Well, that's just how it works. But in between, you know that the growth is taking place. Have the same trust with personal development. Work at it and have faith that you are improving. The key to it is to get in the gym and work. So let me offer a final word here. I'm on a spiritual journey and I must admit there was a time that I used to ask the question, God, why can't you just give me a road to Damascus experience? I mean, just hit me with that ball of light and change me like you did Paul in the Bible. I mean, why do I have to struggle so hard to be who you want me to be? But since, I've come to learn that my spiritual maturity, for whatever reason, is indeed a journey. And it is, at times, a real struggle. But I try, I fail, and I try again. Well, human personal development is really no different. It is a journey, and it can be a struggle. But people who care recognize that the journey and the struggle are important. And we are willing to struggle for the sake of our own being, for our relationships, and for the sake of humanity. This is just what it takes for being human. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this audio blog segment. If you'd like to reach out to me or learn how you can book me as a speaker for an upcoming meeting, just go to my website, kevinrichardmcnulty.com. You can also find me on Facebook and Twitter. Also, check out my book. If you are in a major life transition or know someone who is, check out The Gap Between Two Worlds, Turning Major Life Transitions into Personal Growth Experiences. You can find it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or at my website. And so for now, thanks for listening.